tired of hearing other YouTubers telling you what to do with your chisels, how to sharpen them, tips and tricks? Well, I've heard your complaints of shed your tears and I've felt your sorrows. I've spilt the same blood in the same mud. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your chisels. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to tell you what not to do. And I'm going to do it right now. Don't number 15. Don't settle for an uneven chisel back. To create a sharp edge, you need both sides of the chisel to create that sharp edge. And having a flat back in the beginning is going to create the right foundation so that you can have a sharp chisel. So don't neglect the back of your chisel. Don't number 14. Don't sharpen your chisels without a lubricant. Now the type of lubricant you use may depend on the sharpening surface that you have and different sharpening surfaces can take different types of lubricant. Personally, I like to use trusty old WD-40 for my float glass with micro finishing sandpapers. You may have a water stone and a water stone uses water. So it depends on what you like. There are different lubricants, WD-40 of course, water we mentioned, oil, Windex, a variety of different things. So don't sharpen your chisels without lubricant. Don't, number 13, don't start chiseling an inlay or a dovetail or any other workpiece without a strop on hand. The purpose of the strop is to maintain that sharp edge on your bevel of your chisel. While chiseling, you're going to want to go back to that float glass, your grit papers, your whetstone, or whatever you use. But to avoid that and prolong the life of those tools, that's what the strop is for. This particular one is a double-sided leather strop with a hardwood piece. I'll leave a link in the description for this particular one from Beavercraft. Go ahead and shop around for that if you like and pick up one. But don't start chiseling without your strop on hand. Don't number 12. Don't use your strop without a stropping compound. Now, the stropping compound is made of a fine substance that's used in the final stages of the sharpening process. These compounds often come in a wax bar, a spray, or even a paste. The good thing is, if you purchase a strop, sometimes they come with their own compounds, so you get a twofer. Don't, number 11, don't sharpen freehand. Always, I repeat, always use a honing guide. The honing guide is designed to create perfect angular precision sharpening. You think you're good, but you're not that good. You want to be that good, but you got to trust that you're not that good. It's the cocky sharpener who always has rounded bevels. Don't sharpen freehand. Always use a honing guide. Don't number 10. Don't apply uneven pressure when sharpening a chisel on your honing guide. Mirror your left hand and your right hand so they're in the same position. Applying even pressure with a mirrored grip will prevent an uneven bevel. Don't number nine. Don't bother owning a chisel set if you have no way to sharpen them. When I bought my first chisel set, I was totally unprepared and there's no substitution for preparedness. I used them over and over again and they became more and more dull. Fortunately, I wasn't doing any fine woodworking like dovetails or anything like that, so it didn't matter that much, but find something that works for you, be it the whetstone or the diamond stone or even the scary sharp sharpening system like I have here. And if you're interested in how I use this, check out the video right here where I go in depth about how 25 bucks can get all your chisels sharpened. On the other hand, have something there, have something ready. Be kind to your chisels, keep them sharpened. Have a sharpening system. Don't number eight. Don't be confused by sharpening compound, honing compound, or stropping compound. These are just different names for the same thing. Yes, there are variances in the types of these compounds, but they're simply just a mixture of different abrasive chemical substances that have been ground down to be very fine, such as chromium oxide, aluminum oxide, or even diamonds. Don't number seven. Don't use your water stone until the stone has fully been soaked in water, allowing all of the bubbles to fully permeate through the material. This may take 10 to even 15 minutes. The water will act as a lubricant, so when the particles are taken off of the blade, they will easily leave the stone when you are sharpening. Without that lubricant and particles being removed, you'd have an uneven bevel, an uneven chisel. 
Dough number six. Don't obsess. Don't about it and I'm obsessing about it. And I want to think about anything else but that, but it's making me crazy. Overly obsess about the flatness of the back of your chisel. Your time is valuable. And if you're spending too much time on the back, you're losing sight of the overall objective. And that's a sharp chisel. Now I know some of you are going to hear this and you're going to want to comment. Leave a comment if you disagree with me. I get it. It's my opinion. But just don't get too carried away with the back of your chisel. Sometimes you got to turn it over and work on that bevel. Don't number five. Don't forget to check your chisel for wear marks or an uneven bevel just as you're beginning the sharpening process. It's important to check your progress to confirm your precision. And once your precision, positioning, and technique is right on, you can go ahead and continue with the sharpening process. And don't forget to stop along the way and recheck that bevel. Don't number four. Don't forget to feel for the burr of the chisel's opposite side of where you're sharpening. So if you're sharpening the back, you'll feel for that burr on the front and vice versa. Confirmation of this burr tells you you're actually sharpening the very tip of that chisel. Now this burr will be a shard of metal or shards of a likely rough metal. And after you feel that burr, don't rub it in your eye. It's easy to get metal in your eye and you don't want to accidentally do that. I think you just got a bonus dough. That one's on the house. Dough number three. Don't settle for that standard 25 degree bevel that it comes with right out of the box. Always raise your craftsmanship to the next level by giving it a secondary 30 degree bevel that will give you that scary sharp chisel that will provide professional results. Dough number two. Don't use your sharpening stone or your float glass without having one of these grip pads to prevent slipping while you're sharpening your chisel. These things tend to move around quite a bit. Also, they're very inexpensive and I'll leave a link in the description so you can purchase one yourself. As an added bonus, they wipe clean hassle-free of any water or lubricants that you put on them. Can't beat that. If you've made it this far into the video, I just want to say I really appreciate your support and giving this video a try. I want to also let you know that none of the don'ts are in any particular order. But this last one I saved for a significant reason because I think it gives a bit of woodworker's perspective. And before I give you that number one don't, I just want to let you know in this video right here is a video of 15 more chisel sharpening don'ts. Check that out when you're done with this last don't. And here goes, don't number one. Number one. Don't believe in the muscle memory myth. Muscles don't have memory. And this is a bit of a callback to don't number 11, but hear me out. What I mean by this is very experienced woodworkers sometimes think using a honing guide is a waste of time because they have been doing it for so long that they can sharpen freehand and frankly have too much pride. Using a steady hand has nothing to do with woodworking skill. It has more to do with being steady and having physical great control which is often associated with youth. I'd rather have a non-woodworker who is 25 years old with steady hands, freehand sharpen my chisels, than the 75 year old with 50 years of woodworking experience and Parkinsonian trimmers. Sorry guys, youth beats age in this department. But regardless, just use a honing guide. Dude sawed us out.